Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Sarah and Adam Show. I'm predictably with my co-host, Sarah. Sarah, I know how you are, but Adam. please tell everyone else. I'm fine. How you are. Oh, that's not how you told me, but oh. okay. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> it got weird. Oh. Uh, so, yeah, today we've got Andor to talk about the penultimate episode. Yeah. I was realizing that when I was like, just quickly typing in our, our little show sheet. I was like, oh, it's it's over next week. Yeah, it is. It's kind of sad. I, well, it really is, because now we'll, then we'll go, like, we went from a period of too many shows, and now we just won't have any shows. Right, now we're like, okay. So what are we going to watch, The Boys? I kind of want to watch The Boys. All right. I'm curious if you're going to like it or not. I don't know. I I really liked the Sanderson version. Uh, like obviously, it's not writing the same story, but mm -hmm. it's um. They say that the two are are very very similar. So it'll be fun to kind of compare the two. So guys, if you haven't read uh, Steel Heart by Brandon Sanderson, if you want to kind of ride along with us, uh, I'm I'm at least going to read Steel Heart concurrently with the with the with watching the show. I think. So that you can kind of I, I can compare and see, contrast a little bit. I can see why it would be similar. Um, I don't know how many. I mean, I don't. I don't know because I didn't watch it when I read Steelheart. So now I'm curious if I, if I read it while we watched it, if I would find the same comparisons. But I don't know how many comparisons you would find. Probably like at least three. At least three. Okay, I'm going to hold you to that. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> I, I just feel I'm, like, I feel like the I'm boys, afraid. the boys is like a grittier, gritty, gritty isn't the, even the right word. It's, it's, there's a lot of gratuitous violence in it. <laughs> gratuitous? Gr gratuitous. <laughs> Grit, gratuitous, yeah. Yeah, there's okay. like there's like a ton. Uh, I find like for me personally, I have to be in the right frame of mind to watch it. Oh, yeah, it's on Prime, right? Yeah, it's on Prime. What do you want to like? You want to just do one one episode at, at each time? You want to do two? What? How many how many episodes are there per season? Um, I honestly can't remember. I want to say like ten, maybe mm. maybe twelve. There's de I don't think there, there's definitely not more than twelve. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Very well. Well, yeah, we'll have to do the math. We'll figure it out. But I'm excited mm -hmm. to try it. I haven't watched that show before. Yeah, I'm super curious to hear what you think about it. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. Yeah. So we'll have we'll have that because then after next week it's no, no Star Wars. Still no Wheel of Time. Nope. Uh, yeah. So, what kind of news do we have today? Um. So this is kind of it's not directly related to Wheel of Time, but kind of. Uh. So Prime also has this Orlando Bloom show, Carnival Row, um, which I have not watched. But the final season they announced is they announced this week the final season is going to premiere in February, um, and they kind of like just announced a. A little bit of their schedule or whatever. Wheel of Time was not on it. So to me, it doesn't make sense to have... It doesn't make sense to announce a show for February. But not announce... Um, like if Wheel, if they were like, oh yeah, Wheel of Time is going to come out December 15th. Like it doesn't make sense to not announce that. Uh, so if it's the final season of Carnival Row, I don't think they're going to want anything competing with it. If it's starting mm. February, we're probably looking like end of March to April at the earliest for Wheel of Time. I guess. I mean, I... Which feels very long. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I, um, I don't know, like... Uh, 
what it came out this time last year right was the season yeah it was, one. It was november 19th last year i only know that because um i saw like the the season one poster of it and it has the november 19th date on it so like pretty much a year a year roughly from when we were recording is when it came so out right now wow well, yeah. yeah i mean I haven't even rewatched it yet, to be honest. I I was, I'm not that excited for it. I, I'll just be like totally upfront. Like I'll watch it for mm -hmm. sure because I'm a big fan of Wheel of Time. Mm -hmm. But I was just kind of, um, I don't know. There's a lot of things that just kind of made me hate it. I don't know, not hate it, but there there are a lot of things that I was just like, Ugh. like there there were some things that were so messed up, like so like. You know, they they just have like the the white cloaks, you know, like burning Aes Sedai alive and stuff. Like it's it's yeah. horrifying, I guess. So do do you think you would have been more excited for it if there wasn't such a long gap? No, I just didn't feel that excited for the next season period, mm -hmm. frankly. I'm just curious because, you know, like sometimes when there's like a long gap between things, you sort of lose your, like, I don't want to say moment momentum, but you lose your interest, like other things. What do you feel? I feel like, like, I, I don't, I don't know. I wouldn't say I'm excited for, I feel like I'm more impatient now. I'm like, what is the holdup? I just want to see what season two is like. And it feels hmm. like they're just dragging their feet. Which is irritating me. Okay. Yeah, I, I just... um, I don't know, between... So my favorite part of the whole season was Matt. Right. And yeah, and it's going to be a different yeah. actor. And it's a different actor. Mm -hmm. And so, you like, you take that... Like, there were some good moments and stuff, but there was also just, like, some nonsense moments. Like, I, I just didn't understand. It was like... They wanted to show girl power, and that's that's fine. That's great. Uh, you know, girl power. The girls are powerful. That's, that's that's wonderful. But but it's like, okay, the men are gonna go kill themselves in one place, and then the the girls are gonna then be forced to defend themselves in a different place. But mm -hmm. the women are are powerful in their own right, anyways. And so I don't know why the guys got like their own like they got a last stand, and then the women are like, well, we're just gonna use the power and kill everyone. Right. I power. see what you mean. And, like, I, I don't know. There was just a lot of things that I was just like, this doesn't make much sense. Like, even if they, they're expanding the roles for, like, Lady Amelisa and all this stuff, like, that that's fine. I'm fine with some of the stuff that they chose to do that was different from the books. Like, you, you have to be okay with that. But I, I just, I ended up not wanting what they, mm -hmm. like, I, I just, there was so much cringe to it, I felt like. I was just like, why are you doing this? Why is this happening? Mm-hmm. That's fair. I think that's fair. So, I mean, and and a lot of that could have been probably alleviated by me not having read the books, frankly. Like, right. I'll tell you what, I've, I've been to the book Reddit a few times and where they talk about the show and that it is so negative about the show. I believe that because everyone that I know that's watched the show who hasn't read the books has enjoyed it. Right. Well, that that's the really interesting part is a lot of people who haven't read the books are like, yeah, it's just a cool, like not maybe not like game of thrones quality you know production level mm -hmm. or whatever show but but like it's a cool fantasy show that you know like no worries and i'm like but 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 right and like that and know? that's why like when we were watching it i didn't notice so many things that you did because i obviously haven't finished the series right oh yeah um I, i'll watch it though we'll cover it that'll be fine yeah yeah so it just won't i i don't think it'll be before april though Oh, you know, another option we could potentially watch would be The Witcher. Oh, I haven't boys. watched that. You haven't watched that? Watched that? Yeah. Um. So I read. I actually, I was gonna. I was like, oh, cool. This uh, everyone loves this show. I'm gonna actually read all the books first, and then I'll circle back and watch the show. Okay. And then I, I haven't actually watched the show. But you've read the books. Most of them. I think I, I'm missing two or three. Okay. I just I lost momentum, frankly. Mm -hmm. When you start disliking most of the characters in a series, it's hard to keep going. True. For me. True.
the, the most interesting part about those books are actually the fact that they're all written in a different language and they've all been translated into English. Oh, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. They're all Polish or something. I forget. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Interesting. Um, yeah, that's an option. Okay. Well, guys, if, if you have a, a preference, tell us in our Discord server. Mm -hmm. Or in the comments on YouTube. Yeah. Good suggestion. Yeah. Um, do you have any news? Uh, so just as it touches on uh, Andor, so mm -hmm. I, I figured we could save that for the very last. Otherwise, I don't think there's anything. Um, right. Yeah, we will be covering Bad Batch, I guess, in January, right? Yeah, that's when it's supposed to come out. Yeah. Assuming it hasn't been pushed back again. Yeah. And then I think Mando starts in February. Projected February, yeah. Theoretically. We're not going to cover Carnival's Row, I'm sorry. No. You can cover that on your own time, Sarah. <laughs> I'll have so much free time next year. That'll be helpful. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, that was that was the only little tidbit I found. Okay, cool. So... So we have, uh, in terms of, okay, so so they did a, an interview with uh, Tony Gilroy, mm -hmm. who is the producer for this show, for Andor, and they asked about Kino Loy's fate, that's uh, Gollum, you know, Andy Serkis. Mm -hmm. Right. And, you know, because he, he can't swim, and... Uh, so they asked when, when asked if he presumes Kino was executed shortly after Gilroy said, I don't know. He's not dead. Is he dead? I don't see him dying in episode 10. <laughs> I, I mean, that, that would be a pretty sad death, actually. It would. I find that just like to be such a fun answer, though. He's like, is he dead? Mm hmm. I Sometimes, like, you want closure in, in stories and stuff like that. Like, you want to know everything that happens to a character. But sometimes it's right. just nice to leave it vague and then have an opportunity in the future to just bring that person back. Yeah, like, I, I could see him. Uh, like, do I... <laughs> but do you, do you really want to see a show, like, a series based off of Kino Loy's life? Oh, no. No, no, no. I I, I just think if he, if he isn't dead, like, maybe he pops up in an episode randomly. But... Right. Well, yeah, it would be kind of fun to see, like, an episode where, like, Cassian is about to fight this big battle or something. He looks, like, to the guy, like, across from him or, like, or like to the right of him. And it's, like, Kino Loy. And they're like, oh, wow. And then Kino Loy, like, just dies before they could even talk. <laughs> no, I wouldn't want that. But, but, like, but like that, yeah. But like that. Yeah, so, I don't know. I th I just find that's just such a clever, I mean, like, coy answer, though. Sure. Well, I mean, as as a director, I'm, I'm assuming, like, if you're writing all this stuff, a lot of it, like, you, you grow attached to these characters. Not to mention, mm -hmm. it's associated with a pretty big actor's name. Like, why, why just burn those bridges when you don't really have to? Right, like, exactly. You can just leave it open-ended and then see how people respond to his character. Yeah, yeah you don't have to like him. Mm-hmm. Oh, actually, uh, I did see a bit of Andor news today, too. And, oh, okay. Um, but I'll, I'll tell you after this. What? Okay, <laughs> like, let's not tell let's not tell our listeners. That's fine. Oh, no, I meant after after we've talked about this little, maybe he's dead, maybe he's not. Oh, I'm, we're done. Let's talk about the next thing. Oh. <laughs> so, you know how you were talking about the, um, last week you were talking about the viewership for Andor was lower than... Um, mm -hmm whatever they thought it was going to be. Um, so first of all, I found it interesting because apparently the company that they use to track that stat only tracks t like TV streaming viewer viewers of, on Disney+. Plus. So if you stream on your phone or a laptop mm. or anything, it doesn't count. And I was <laughs> sitting there, I was like, oh, so like when I've watched it at work every single time, it hasn't counted because I watch it on a computer. Um, oh, you've wanna... contributed to their low numbers, Sarah. Yeah. But anyway, so so that's just an aside. Um, apparently, Disney has decided to air and or 
starting, um, I think it's after American Thanksgiving or just before American Thanksgiving on cable TV. Oh, yeah, there's the first two episodes, right? Yeah. So Yeah. uh, I thought that was interesting. Maybe they're trying to get people into it and get their viewership up. So... Yeah, well, gosh, the first two are just, like, the build-up for the finale of the third. Well, it, and it's funny, Dirty. too, because, like, Dirty, man. like when it aired on, or when it premiered on Disney+, Plus, it, was it the first two or the first three that they released at once? I thought it was Oh, three. yeah. I don't know. I think it was just two. Maybe it was two. I can't remember now. But um, either way, like, it's going to be, I think it's an interesting idea from them, so. I'm curious if that does anything to the numbers afterwards. Yeah, no idea. Yeah, I, I hope so. I mean, I want I want them to have success with it, and Mm. like it is, I think an object. Well, I don't know if objectively good if there's such that, but it seems to me like everyone who watches it, who's like, it has enjoyed it to some degree at least. Um, Yeah, I agree. It's just. It's just like people are like, oh yeah, hey, you got to watch the show. It's cool. It's called Andor. It's Star Wars. They're like, oh cool. Like how many Jedi are there? Uh, zero. How many Zero. lightsabers? Zero. How many quippy hand quotes are there? Zero. You know, how many main characters will I recognize? Probably zero. Yeah, not not that many. Oh man, but it's good. I want to see I want to see Krennic is what who I want to see. Because he's part Yeah. of the ISB, like he's wearing the same, he wears the same white uniform, like he's he's part of it. He's That would be a cool cameo. as a director, like he's in a, he's important. Mm -hmm. He directs things. I wonder if he'll be in season two. I hope so. That would be cool. Um, Yeah. okay. Uh, that, that was all of my news. Cool. Okay. Um. So you want to talk about the episode? Yeah, let's, uh, let's talk about it. This was a, f I thought this was, this was an interesting one because it felt really fun, but it also felt like filler. And it also Oh, felt okay. sad. Yeah. Yeah. Um, why? <laughs> Tell me all about it. Tell me your thoughts. so it felt like filler... Maybe not necessarily filler. It just felt like it was more a more of a um, establishing, like more of a setup episode for the finale next week. Basically, like you're establishing that Cassian is out. They've broken out him and Melshi. Um, are they gonna make it? Type of thing. And then you're seeing more of staring guy again. That I still am like. What's going on with you and your mother? But okay. Um, by mother and then, like, it was just, like, a little bit of everyone having more establishment done for their plot headed into the finale. mm And then, hmm obviously, it's sad because of, of Cassian's mom and the droid. B was really sad. Um, that, that was really, really rough. Um, but then it also felt really fun at the end with Luthan. So I was like, Yeah. I just feel like I went on a roller coaster here. It's all right. Which is like I guess is fine. I guess it's a good thing. They want I I would think as a as a show like writer and director, you would want to toy with your audience's emotions. Yeah, well, there's a, they did set up a lot of stuff, like lots of tension on all the different storylines. They had Mm hmm everything. Um, A Bix looked like crap. yeah, I was like, wow. I, I was like, is that even the same actress? Like, she looked, I mean, like, she just looked like she had been tortured. I mean, obviously, she has been, but, like, she looked It's really, horrible. she, yeah, she looked rough. Yeah, I was like, gosh, that, that is rough. Um, what what storyline do you want to talk about first? Should we talk about the Cassian one? Because it was like almost didn't exist. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about that. First, can I say the opening scene for Andor every time, like they're always like skip the intro, but then if you skip the in like it still doesn't skip the the like opening, like it eventually shows Andor, and it takes like 
takes like 12 hours for the Andor logo to show up. I know. It always fakes me out. I'm like, ooh, they go we're starting in space. We're going to a planet. No, this is just the intro. Yeah. It's just like fading out or whatever into the actual show. I'm like, I'm going to go do the dishes while this is going on. <laughs> um, Yeah, so I... His storyline, I, I think his was maybe the most fillery. That sounds weird. Oh, we well, we kind of needed to know how he got to where he was, and yeah. I did like the alien guys. Yeah, they were they were pretty funny, and <laughs> I just enjoyed the fact that Cassie and Mel she were just trying to run and make a break for it, <clears throat> at just not caring at all that they were being seen, and these alien guys were like, "Uh, no," and just right. They just like looked at their button and they're just like timed it. Boop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that was uh, very entertaining to watch, I think. Just seeing it, whatever this contraption was, catch them. Yeah. It's like they're supposed to catch fish in these. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then like the empires messed everything up and they're like, yeah, like they ruined the fishing here. Like, screw them. Yeah. Everything was just. Just I thought it, Sorry, go ahead. I would have liked to see a little bit more of their evasion of the Imperial forces. Yeah, like after, like, when they were swimming away and stuff like that. Oh, well, yeah, like, you know, like, because you have all the patrol ships that are going around and, you know, like, all we really saw, we, I saw, we saw the undercarriage of a TIE Reaper. Yeah, like, while they we were saw, kind of scaling along that beachy cliffside or whatever it was. Right. Well, and we didn't see any other prisoners get caught. Like, the, they didn't stick with any other prisoners. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we have no <laughs> idea what the outcome was for anyone else. Right. Their, uh, I thought their prison uniforms were funny. They were, like, perfectly camouflaged with the sand that they were crawling in. <laughs> Which like, is... maybe... I don't know. I guess they probably didn't have many escapes before that, but it, it, it was just funny. I was like, oh, yeah, they can just, like, lay there. No one's going to see them. Yeah. Just camouflage yourself in and you're and you're good. Um Yeah, and then I mean we we mostly just saw him getting to where he was and him and Melshi agreeing that like people need to know about the Empire and what they're doing. Yeah. Um Oh well, so I thought it was funny, like the the girl he was sleeping with mm -hmm. uh previously, like all we've seen, uh, like, she's, she's apparently just, um, like, the village bicycle. Because um, she just had, like, a random other alien in there, in bed with her. Mm -hmm. And he just, like, sneaks in and his, his all of his stuff is still just stashed in there. Like, yeah, just goes and gets it and or yeah. gets what he needs. And then he discovers that his mom is dead. And I'm like, couldn't they have broken out of prison, like, two days later? Like it's all very convenient timing, right? Like, yeah, he's been he's been in prison for how many months, and then his mom dies at the same time that he breaks out, and then he's gonna be going to the funeral clearly, so they can come and catch him, kind of thing. Right. Well, everyone's everyone's there for it. Like it, it's it's a party, mm -hmm. and yeah. So he's like, dude, your your mom's dead. Uh, he's like, well, crap. And then I just thought it was so abrupt, actually. Um. So he's clearly good friends with Melshi yeah. in in Rogue One, yeah. Like, and and they've stayed together for this escape. And then Melshi's like, "Hey, we gotta split up. We gotta go. We gotta. We mm -hmm. got." And and Cassian's like, "Yeah, okay, whatever." And Melshi just like leaves that minute. Like right. he doesn't just like, "All right, I'm leaving first thing in the morning." It's like it's it, the sun is setting. Yeah, there's something wrong with Cassian, and Melshi's like, "Peace." <laughs> Guess he's like here, have some money. Uh, I'm curious, like how you get from that to Rogue One, right? Like you, you have to think that either they they do end up like exchanging numbers, so to speak, like somehow right. they can contact each other, or they just like meet up on Yavin Four one day. They're like, hey, whoa, look at you! Yeah, yeah, ex and then and then just fall back into the, their friendship or something. 
Uh, we'll see. I, mm-hmm. Whatever. Like, Mel, she's a pretty minor character, but yeah, I kind of wanted to see more of him, frankly. It's just a little bit entertaining, so. But it's like, just funny. He's like, we have to split up. We got to make sure they know. Cassie's like, sure. And he's like, okay, I'm leaving right now. Why? Yeah. See you. See you later, maybe. Yeah. He's like, I got a new shirt. I'm good. Oh. <laughs> uh-huh. But, like, I mean, like, other than this, really, it, it really did feel like Cassian was sort of minor again. Well, I mean, they're, they're way bigger players than him at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah, very true. So, um, what did you think about when he was, was calling and trying to get that message to his mom? And um, I'm blanking on the name of the guy he was talking to, but he was just, like, kept trying to tell him. That his mom was dead. It was just sad, man. Yeah. Like, well, I thought that part was well done, actually. Because that guy's like, I I shouldn't be the one who has to tell him this. Like, what? But, but he needs to know. Right. Like, I, 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 I haven't been in that situation. I've, I've been in the situation, like, when my grandma died, I had to tell my sister. And that, that was, that, I mean, that. But it it should have come from me or someone like like mm-hmm. me, not just some random person, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but like this guy, you know, obviously Endor kind of trusts the guy, but but like the guy doesn't want to be the one who t- like there are clearly more qualified people to tell Endor this horrible news, right? And what do you do? Like, I mean, I think. What do you think? What what should he have done? Well, so th- this is my 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 question on this whole situation because I like I I agree you, you do want to like break the news but you don't want to break the news at the same time. Do do you think this guy knew that the empire is looking for Cassian? I would assume so because like everyone on Ferrix has kind of been like muttering about it and based off how much imperial presence there is there. Maybe I think they've kept it pretty quiet about the, how they want Cassian. Actually, okay, because I, I don't think I don't think they want. No, actually, I'm I'm pretty certain they don't know, and like, and no one knows that they want Cassian because they're like, okay, we're gonna watch the mom, we're gonna torture people, and then we're gonna keep them, but and we're gonna ask about Cassian, but but like we're not like they've gone to great pains to ask like no one about Andor, like they just want right. There's. They they don't want to tip their hand. They don't want to be like, "Hey, everyone, we're looking for Andor," and that because his mom would hear, and she'd be like, "Hey, stay the hell out of here." Right. Well, no, because I'm I'm only asking because I'm wondering, like, if he did know, wouldn't you not tell Cassian so that he doesn't come back for the funeral? Right. Like well, as, well, yeah. as like trying to like protect him, sort of. But but you're right. If if they're hiding it as much as that, then. You you tell him and then I guess he shows up. Right. Well, I I did think that was nice a nice touch of like Cassian still very does very much very clearly does care about his mom. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It was a really good touch, and I also think it it's probably gonna be what pushes Cassian forward. Well, I I think it goes to the funeral and. Yeah. He's like, okay, the girl that I kind of like, you know, whatever, has been tortured. Mm-hmm. My mom is dead from, you know, she wants to be a rebel and now she's dead. Um, mm-hmm. These guys are just trying to abuse my homeland and, you know, like they gave a, a permit, what they never do, just to trap him. And, yeah. Right. He's like, all right. Yeah. I'm in. Yeah. So. I, I just really see this as, like, something that's going to to be the thing. You know, like, you, you just need a thing that's going to, like, Mon Mothma needs a thing that's going to make her leave, right? And I think Cassian needs that as well. It's going right. to make him go more into the Rebel Alliance. And I think this is going to be it. Yeah, I, I think I agree. Um, yeah, so let's, do, let's pick a different okay. uh, thread. Let's save Luthen for the end, though, if we can, please. Okay. Do you want to talk about staring guy? Because there was like, sure, blank and you miss it content with him. Well, I thought it was interesting. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. His mom. Well, his mom was uh, obviously she's just so awful. She is, and I'm 
pretty sure that that actress was in Harry Potter as well. And I can't place it. Hmm. So that tells, I was like, I was just staring at it and I was watching the scene and I was like, staring guy is super boring. And I'm, st- and I'm staring at his mom. I'm like, I've seen you somewhere. Um, yeah. I, she, she is though. Just, just. Is in well, cause, um, his mom, Andor's mom is in Harry Potter, isn't she? Yeah. She's Aunt Petunia. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so, I mean, I guess I shouldn't be surprised by that at all. But, yeah, she's just not, she's just not nice. And I, I'm still, like, with Staring Guy, I'm like, what are you, what's your goal? Like, what are you trying to, other, other than, like, appease your mother and, and try, which I feel like is an impossible task. What is, what is your goal here? What is your purpose? Right, Agreed. So, I would like to know. All right, I found the lady. Her name is Catherine Hunter. Catherine Hunter. I feel like she played like Mrs. Yeah, she was Mrs. Fig. Yeah, Mrs. Arabella Ella, Arabella Fig. Nailed it. Go figure. <laughs> I, um, I don't even give a fig about yeah. her. Yeah, I figured. So. Um, that, yeah, sorry, that wasn't even related to the episode. It was just bugging me when I watched it. Oh, you're good. Uh, so yeah, she, she's pretty awful. And I mean, I thought it was it like, she's like the great mystery of your past successes is here. And it's like, he had a guy that was loyal enough to him to want to call and tell him something It's right. important. Like that, I feel like that should have impressed her a little bit, actually. Right, and that was, like, a pretty important call, I think, for him to be like, hey, like, Cassian's mom's dead. He's going to be coming back here for the funeral. Right. Like, that's that's a lot of really good information. Yeah, so why do you think he stole money from his mom at the end? I mean, I have my own mm. suspicions. I don't know. What, what are your suspicions? Because I'm like, are you just... I don't think he's going to take off and like. I do. I think he's going to Ferrex. But. But do you think he's going to Ferrex? What, sorry, I should have clarified. I don't think he's going to like take off and disappear and like needs money to like start afresh. Like I would think if he was going to Ferrex, he's going to Ferrex to make a name for himself in the Empire. Yeah, I think he's going to catch Endor. Right. Yep, I think that's it. Try and redeem just... himself because of what happened at Ferrex on Ferrex last time. Yeah, yeah, that's a good that's a good point. I, I'll be honest. I was hoping when he got the call, I thought I was hoping it was Uncle Harlow. I wanted to see who that was. Right. Which I don't think they mentioned him this episode. Nope. So I'm curious if that's just is that just a a MacGuffin. I mean, a MacGuffin actually has purpose, though, doesn't it? I mean, it drives, red herring, it maybe. Dri- it drives maybe a red herring. Yeah, is a better, a better term for it. Yeah, I, I typed in Uncle Har and then autocorrected to Uncle Harlow. Let's see. Did it really? Yeah, like it filled it in the, the rest of the way. Let's see. See what it says. I can find anything on this this Wikipedia site. I feel like it. Harlow was the uncle of Cyril Karn. That's it. Gender male. (laughs) That is not a lot of info. No, no Mm -hmm. info at all. Okay, Mm -mm. that'll still be it. All right, maybe it is a red herring. Maybe, maybe it's a blue herring. Maybe you can never tell. (laughs) Maybe Uncle Harlow will also be on Ferrex. It's a red Harlow Harling. Oh boy. Um, yeah. Okay. Maybe who, Uncle Harlow is. Uh, uh, what's his name? I forget his name now. All of a sudden. Luthen. Luthen. Yeah, I'm pretty sure not, but that'd be funny. I don't think so. I wonder yeah. if Uncle Harlow is is one of Luthen's like spies maybe i i think i think 
right now my biggest i mean it's not like a lead at all but like my biggest supposition like i don't think it's lucid i think if it's anyone that we know that we've met mm -hmm. it's going to be the gangster that mon mothma has been talking to yeah yeah i agree he seems to be unless like you said it's, it's somebody else that we haven't met yet but out of the people we've met and not Luthen, he would i feel like fit the bill personality wise <laughs> here's here's the twist mm -hmm. um karn is actually agent karn staring guy is only 14 what and that that would be the twist oh. he's only 14 and uncle harlow's gonna try to get him married to mon mothma <laughs> Oh, man. No, thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah, I agreed. <laughs> do you want to talk about Mon Mothma? Because I don't think there's anything else left with Staring Guy. Yeah, Staring Guy is off on an adventure. Um, and I don't care at all that he stuck it to his mom. No. As that might have, that could have come out better, but... No. Yeah, he stole from his mom. Okay, so Mon Mothma. Um, this felt interesting to me she I, it felt like she was clearly very torn her and val were clearly very torn about her daughter and like how her daughter was interacting with all the other like girls her age and stuff with i guess like the values she was showing or whatever well yeah, she's doing like shandrelin tradition things yeah. it's like bible camp but for shandrelin tradition mm -hmm. and they I don't know. It was a really interesting conversation to see, though, to see, like, Mom Mothma was obviously masking her concern in a way, but not really. And Vel clearly was not. And she was like, well, who's, like, is this um, Perrin? Like, like, where is this coming from? So right. It was just an interesting thing. Yeah, well, and then Mon Mothma kind of maps it out. She's like, "Yeah, I've had issues, mm -hmm. like, and they're gonna come in. They're gonna come in and get me." Like, I, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I felt like once she spelled it all out for us, mm -hmm. I felt I felt like a little more compassion for Mothra. Yeah, I, I, she, she actually looked like a concerned parent here. Versus the other scenes I've seen her do so far involving, like, her daughter. Yeah. Well, I, mean, I think she likes the idea of liking her, of having a good relationship with her teenage daughter. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I don't know. There was something more... It just felt more genuine in this scene. Yeah. Well, she she seems desperate. She did play off desperate, finally. Mm-hmm. Pretty well, like... We'll see. Like, I, I'm curious to see if she leaves at the end of this season yeah. or if she she does make a deal with the devil, kind of. Yeah, that's going to be... I mean, that's going to tell us a lot, I think. Yeah. So, and, I, and I don't know, because I feel like this would have been the episode for something to kind of happen to them to set it up for her to leave. Right. So... I don't, I don't know what you do next week to force her hand sort, sort of so that she does leave without it feeling too jarring and rushed. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't really know. Like, I, I don't remember. It seems like there's already been an established way that she leaves the Empire, but, like, being chased out because of some money laundering issues seems a little... I don't know. Kind of, kind of just sad <laughs> for the eventual leader of the rebellion. Right. Kind of just like lazy writing. Maybe. I I, I don't know if it's late. I, I, no, I, I just would her, expect more from her to leave. I'll be honest. I wanted more scenes of her like talking to other senators and, mm -hmm. you know, like hobnobbing in the Senate. It, like, you know, she had a couple scenes like just like sitting on the chair, but there's like are almost no one paying any attention. Like, she's just, like, almost reading her little skits or little things to herself. Right. And everyone's, like, distracted by the news. You know, Aldani got hit. All this stuff has ha is happening. All this, you know, like, no one's even paying attention to her. And I'm like, 
She's been a senator for a long time. You'd think she'd wield more influence. Right. So it's it's interesting that they're not showing that and that she doesn't have that influence. Well, it'd be nice to see, like, Masamita, you know, like the the guy who's supposed to be, you know, like, doing something in the set. Like, he's supposed mm -hmm. to be in the middle and the little floaty thing in the middle. Like, the, you know, the emperor would be there too, potentially, but, like... It would be nice to see any of those proceedings. It'd be nice to see Bail Organa. There's mm -hmm. all sorts of things I'd like to have seen in the Senate. And I feel like we just haven't seen any of that. They kind of played it off as like, yeah, we're going to see that. And most of it is just like her having parties at her house and <laughs> drinking worms. Like, Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's just a weird, I don't know. I promise I'll look out my window more. Right. <laughs> so... We'll see. I'm curious what happens next episode with her, but I I don't know if I have a lot of high hopes for her storyline, at least this season. No, it's been fairly boring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, like, Val went and questioned that girl at the shop. Her name, her name has Leia in it, or Leia, like Aaliyah, maybe. Aaliyah, that sounds right, yeah. Man. Um... <laughs> Which I really enjoyed her playing dumb to all of her questions, by the way. Just being like, oh, she she shops here. Yeah, we've got some new necklaces in or whatever it was. Right. Uh, some new jewelry for her. And just completely being like, no, this isn't how you do things. You clearly don't know what's going on. Right. It was very, um, it was humorous to see. And it was also like uh, fun to see somebody kind of not necessarily put Val in her place but be like no like you're you're playing a bigger game than you think you are mm -hmm. and you're not playing it right right oh yeah it's it's interesting what what was interesting it's always interesting to me too like um if she's the one who gave Val her orders uh originally you know like she gives orders to Val and stuff she's she's part of that um and when she does she she takes her hair down and her hair is all long and she looks like a mm -hmm. totally different person Right, and, and here it was up, and she's all, like, you know, yeah. working in the store. And well, total... Val's like, I I got, I brought him Aldani. What have you done for him lately? She's like, I do everything for him. Like, yeah. STFU. <laughs> it's true. It's just funny. It was like, a, they're, they're comparing sizes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's exactly what it was, so. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, and Val's going to Alda, or to, to Ferrex as well. Everyone's going to Ferrex. Yeah. That's, that's the it place to be. Yeah, his mom is, um, part of the bricks now. Mm-hmm. And she's in a wall. And the droid, the droid is super sad. I just wanted to be like, you can come stay with me. He wants to stay at his own house. I know, but... Can I just say that they are really turning Star Wars into a sketch fest in terms of, like, the droids are clearly sentient. They have emotions. They very clearly do. They are mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. for all intents and purposes. And... They are enslaved. They're all enslaved. Yeah, to choose like their owners. Like if they were actually like robots and they didn't really have feelings or whatever, then mm -hmm. that's one thing. But it's like, you know, it's like, hey, three PO, get over here and do this. No, do it now, a hole, or I'll melt you. <laughs> or I'll melt you. Uh... Like I'll just get a different one. I'll just replace you. Like you're a dime a dozen. He's like, but I have emotions. I'm a person. You're like, shut up. Do what, do what I do my bidding. But they're doing that to play to people like me, who are like, oh, this droid, and then you just want to watch it because of the droids. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I just, it's it's just like slave. It's slavery, mm -hmm. and it's like, you know, it's cute slavery, but it's still slavery. Right. Right. Which is sad. I find it pretty problematic, actually. It's pretty, uh, whatever. Like, I love Star Wars. I just, like... When, uh, when you draw people... that parallel, it's not a good parallel. 
oh yeah like droids are people like and this this droid brought it another step closer like he's clearly deeply sad like he's in mourning phases like and i felt i was like proud of the guy who's like okay fine i'll stay one time like he's doing it for the droids well-being right which would not be a thing if they weren't sentient right well well like so if if you're if someone you love died mm -hmm. and you just went about your life like normal like someone might call you a robot like you don't you don't care mm -hmm. right like mm -hmm. and this droid is showing that it actually it wouldn't be called a robot right and like you you see this in other droids too because like even ones that kind of come off more to, so like i i really liked k2so in rogue one and the reason why i really liked him is because he acts how i would envision a droid to act there's no filter on him like he just says yeah, says whatever pops into his head right he's but, sassy yeah yeah and i'm like that's how a droid should be like they just call it like it is and, and say what's what's going on um but then you see it at the end of the movie that he is sacrificing himself for Cassian and Jin. I'm like, that's n not. That's a, well, that's without being ordered. Right, exactly. That, and I think that's like the key thing. So it's the same thing with other droids, and yeah, they're really pulling on that that string. Yeah, like at the end of episode three, they're like, take these droids and wipe their memories. Mm -hmm. Like, C-3PO has his memory wiped. Like, what? Mm -hmm. Like, you, you can't let this person's memory just be wiped. Just like that? Like, what What if we did that to a person? Right. Man. Like, that That would be highly problematic. And yet, they, they have the same emotional, you know, makeup as, as us, so... I don't know, like, uh, on the surface level, it's like, oh yeah, like, they're just robots, they're just computers. But they're not just computers. Man, you got you got so uh you have to take it real deep with this. <laughs> so that's that's my one mode. It's like I just try <laughs> to keep digging. <laughs> <laughs> that's just uh, how I am. So yeah. Deal with it. Um <laughs> All right. Uh let, so what what's what's the I don't know, is there anything else other than the Luthen? I don't I don't I, think so. I mean, Bix got, we saw Bix a little bit, and she, like I said, looked awful. She's clearly Yeah, the tortured. Imperials, the Imperials are out and about, they're undercover, mm -hmm. that, that undercover Imperial is actually talking to whatever her name is, mm -hmm. the, the undercover rebel who's working at the coffee shop, or blue milk shop, or whatever the hell mm -hmm. that was. Which is funny. Yeah. Two undercover people talking to each other. Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah, but I don't think there was anything else. It's it's just Luthen and and Saw really, which is kind of intertwined in the same. Yeah, I guess there was one scene. Uh, yeah, just like the scenes with the the Imperials who are like trying to draw their net closed. Right. Kind of. Right. That's right. You know, they're talking about the the Ferrix custom of being turned into a brick when you're dead which i thought was actually i'm like hey you have a use it's nice <laughs> you can bludgeon someone with me mm -hmm. i thought i yeah like you said though it was such a quick scene too and they're just going over the custom and yeah and she's like okay well we're gonna have a funeral and we're gonna get him mm -hmm. draw him in and capture him yep man and everyone's gonna be there yeah because she was a prominent figure on Ferrix. Yep. Well, not... I, I meant just, like, more of the people on the show. Like... Oh, sorry, yeah. Uh, like, I think Luthen was planning on going there, too, actually. Sounds mm -hmm. like... Like, with his... We don't really know, but they were talking about Luthen. Like, you know, they're, they're using code words. They're like, oh, but we need this purchase. We need this such and such. She's like, yeah, but this other one is real more important. Right. Yeah, but like Cassian's going there, Val's going there. Yeah, Luthen might be there. Staring guy might go there, probably. Yep, uh, we probably have ambitious psychopath woman. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
That's so it's hard to be there. Um, yeah, so you want to talk about the Saw stuff first? Yeah, I, I thought, so by far, to me, my, my favorite parts of the show, this this episode, was with Luthen and uh, Saw was a big part of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they had a really good interaction. You can see how Saw was starting to just get more and more paranoid. Like, you know, mm-hmm. he's on this... He's on the road to full paranoia that he that where he's reached in Rogue One. Mm-hmm. Which I mean, you can't blame him once he starts putting these pieces together of what like he's realizing with Luthen. Like, it it really, I, I was watching it and I remember thinking to myself and I was like, this really is embodying or embracing like the whole spy genre and not knowing who you can trust. Yeah, like they, uh, like like they don't fully <laughs> know that they can trust if they can trust each other. Yeah, like I keep expecting someone to like take a mask off of of the other person's face, like in <laughs> Mission Impossible. Like, yeah, I thought it was funny that they uh, he tricked two tubes. I know it's funny. Um, I, I think it's fun that Edgeo Two Tubes keeps showing up. Like you know that he's he was a buddy. Uh, he, he followed. And Fizz Nest mm-hmm. originally. I don't. I would. I want to see the story of how he went from Nest to Saw. To Saw. It makes you wonder yeah. if maybe Saw and Nest. Yeah. Interacted. Um, like what happened to Nest? I want to know that. Yeah. Um, yeah, but this was this was. Good, because I also like this. So one, you, you see, like you said, Saw's paranoia really start up, and he doesn't know if he can trust Luthen fully and all this okay. kind of stuff. But you also see him kind of have a bit more of that um, touch of, at least initially, that touch of, like, humanity, of, like, you're really just going to go go let him die? Right. Well, well, yeah, like, I mean, he's, he's also, I'm sure, just like, well, that could happen to me. Mm-hmm. Totally. Yeah, because you know that he's thinking if you're willing to do this to him, you would probably do it to me too. Right. Well, you know, and and Luthen's like, well, you you could actually just bend me over if that happened. Like you could just give give me to them if if you got captured. So I don't want that. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought it was interesting. Luthen was talking to Saw in in the presence of all of Saw's men too. Like they could all hear him. Yeah, he just didn't care. I guess like. So much for operational security, though. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, it, that seemed like an oversight to me. Like, they should have just been talking. I guess the last time they talked was in open air. But they, actually, I, I was waiting for this scene because this was in the previews, mm-hmm. but it never, we hadn't seen it yet. Right. Yeah. So we, we've just been hoping it wasn't cut, basically. Yeah. I, I felt it, it was kind of just a sad thing, though. Like, Saw was like, yeah. I guess we just call it war. Yeah, which I actually enjoyed that line. No, I I like that whole exchange and how they kind of both finally like they found a way to almost justify it. But like, I don't know you, you can't quite blame them for making that decision because like a spy in the ISB mm-hmm. is probably more valuable than a bunch of like low talent thugs. Right. Well. I... And it's like Luthen was saying, like, if you don't let him go, then we tip, we tip the hand that there is a spy in there that's leaking information. Right. And then you're screwed. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it was just, I, I, I think I really enjoyed it out of this whole thing was watching Saw's turmoil and then ultimately coming to the same decision. Right. Well, yeah, I I enjoyed. I like the saw. Like, did have a little bit of humanity there too. Like, because mm-hmm. he's kind of presented in Rogue One. He's like, ah, whatever. Like, kill whoever as long as we meet meet our objective. Right. Well, and it's interesting because, like, like you said, he's presented that way in Rogue One. But you see this side of him, so you know that more of that is probably going to happen. That's going to lead to that ultimate um, portrayal of him. Yeah, I mean, I want to. I just want to see Saw with Mothma. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe not this season, but that that'll have to happen at some point in this show. This seems important. Yeah, yeah. 
I agree. Uh, yeah. So other, otherwise, and then I, I mean, my, probably my favorite part in the whole show. Like, so I, I love the tense part with with Saw, and then you know they're like, "Well, we'll call it what what we need to call it," you know. Yeah, it's called it war. Call it war. Which was a, which such a powerful line. Well, I, I just it's also fun to see like Luthen's playing chess, right? It's like, mm -hmm. well, like if you have a if you have you have to have to make a choice, who are you going to sacrifice? Your pawn or your your rook? You know, right? Like there, there's one obvious choice there, and uh, you know, sorry, pawn, but you're you're there to be expendable. Yeah, sadly, like the rook is going to be beneficial to you all game. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, so so we had that, and then we had the Luthen. Uh, I don't even know what you would call it. Spacecraft, air, spaceship. Yeah, well, you know his Fondor, the mm -hmm. the ship, which messes with me because there's also a planet named Fondor. <laughs> but yeah, so the Fondor, though, like I I just think it it's fun how fancy it was. It's like the ultimate spy ship. It was. This was probably, like, the best scene out of the whole episode, hands down. Yeah. Um, and I was a little bit sad that they left it so close towards the end, because I was like, oh, it's it's over now. Um, oh, yeah, I was I, I was just like, that was awesome. Like, that, that was, like, one of my favorite scenes in the whole show so far, yeah, honestly. Yeah, it was great. So, like, you just see, like, it's just totally outsmarting these, these Empire guys just stalling yeah. for time while he builds what he needs to while while the ship like gets ready essentially mm -hmm. um and then he's got i mean okay so he stalls for time and then first of all we see him fly and shoot some of these tie fighters out of the air yeah. so precisely and smoothly and i was like man this is like really impressive i was already impressed just with that and i was like is he gonna when there was a scene or this part of it where he was flying kind of back towards the main ship with them and i was like is he gonna like deke them out and make them shoot their own ship or crash into their own ship or something like, right um because it just seemed like that kind of a, a setup and then he just slices them with his, yeah with his spaceship lightsabers yeah it was pretty cool man like which is also really funny because we were when we were talking about the viewership last week we were saying you know there's not that typical flying through space lightsabers type of stuff in here in, right. in the show and then we literally got luthan flying through space and his True. ship has lightsabers on it Kind of, kind yeah. of lightsabers. But kind yeah, of it, lightsabers, but you know. No, it's cool, man. I thought it was a lot of fun. Yeah. I, I was like, you know, we play both. We both play that Star Wars game. I'm like, okay, we need Luthen now, and we need that ship in that game. I, I mean, yeah, I watched it, and then I went on Lego immediately, and I was like, is this ship out yet? Like. Uh, yeah that's cool man mm -hmm. uh, you know and i liked how it, it was able to like come up with some like random transponder thing mm -hmm. i mean from alderaan i i'm just gonna say they have to make that a lego ship yeah i hope they do it's a pretty cool ship and i want to know like i think he was debating with alia he was i mm -hmm. think he was think he was debating like she's like you should come home and i think he was like no i think i should go to fondor or fondor <laughs> <laughs> to ferrix ferrix yeah yeah um i think he is gonna go to ferrix i think you're right yeah i thought it was interesting that they were asking bix if the guy who she had uh introduced cassian to Mm -hmm. If it was, if it was uh, Anton Krieger, like the the guy they're setting up, which is, I'm like, yes, answer it, answer it, yeah, say yes, right? So that guy's gonna die anyways. Obscure the trail. <laughs> Obscure the trail. <laughs> well, like we, you know, you don't want. I don't want Luthen to get caught yet. No, you don't. You, especially after, like, you want that ship to keep going. Yeah, someone's got to pilot that thing. Yeah. Andor probably can. Cassian yeah. can have it. Um, 
Yeah, so that was the whole thing, and now we just have one more episode. Yeah. Which is kind of sad. It is sad, actually. But what's going to... I mean, I guess I guess we know, like, most of these... Most of these characters are headed towards Ferex. And yeah. they're all going to just kind of collide there. I know, and we're only going to have 45 minutes to watch. Hopefully we have right. more. But... Maybe it'll be an hour. Maybe. Man. I, I don't even know what to expect. Me either. Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh to keep us guessing and that's nice like that's part of the appeal to the show is i just don't know what's going to happen from episode to episode it was a little fillerish, but I, I think it was just i think it was more just a good setup and yeah and then the, the final scene was like all right that was pretty cool that was badass yeah it, it yeah i think filler maybe is like the wrong word i think it i think it's more set up you you needed a lot i don't necessarily think you needed a lot of what happen but you needed the setup in particular to get to whatever they're gonna do in this finale to get all of these people to ferrix definitely mm -hmm. so yeah yeah maybe mon moth will show up too oh yeah she's the only one that i'm like i don't know i don't know what you're doing she'll just hang out on coruscant maybe like read from some book out loud a little bit yeah who knows who knows what's gonna happen with her She'll do a filibuster in the Senate. That'll be good. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, well. Do you have anything else? No, I think that's it. We should call it good. That was, it was a good episode. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't good enough to keep talking about, probably, for too much longer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so well, I guess we'll just see what happens next week. Yeah, I hope that Luthen doesn't die, even though I've said that a few times that maybe he does. Who knows? He, because I know you were saying like Bix is confirmed for season two. He isn't. Is that right? I have no idea. Okay. He might be. Just curious if you had heard that he wasn't or whatever. So because sometimes I, I just read one specific thing about her mm -hmm. and she. It was just like and she's confirmed for season two. Mm -hmm. So because sometimes they like even when an actor is confirmed for season two, they won't. Co like publicly confirm it because they want to keep like the character's storyline really ambiguous. So I'm just thinking out loud, basically. Yeah, very well. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I think that's it. All right, guys. Um, thanks for listening. Go check out our Discord server. Hit that subscribe button on YouTube, etc. Please. Yep. And we will see you next week. Yeah, for the finale.